Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about trends in edge computing, which is a sector that is experiencing explosive growth now. There's so much going on with edge computing. To discuss that, I'm joined by an industry expert who uses the phrase, the third premise, to describe the world of edge computing. With me is Matt Baker, Senior Vice President at Dell. Hello to you, Matt, and thanks for joining us today. Well, it's great to be here, um, and I'm excited to talk about the third premises. <laughs> uh, so, all right, here we are in mid, mid, mid December. I just have to ask you, are you keeping up with all the, the holiday rush? We're sort of in this very frothy period now. The days are going very fast. Are you keeping up with it all, Matt? Well, I, I always uh, start the day looking at what day is it since the 1st of January? And it's like, it feels like January 340, whatever. So <laughs> I, I'm keeping up, but this, it's not just the last few weeks, it's it's the year. The year is yeah. just flown by. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward. We typically have a shutdown week and people tag on another week of vacation. That's just sort of the way at Dell Technologies. And so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, to getting a break because it's been a fantastic year. Our business has been wonderful. Um, but, you know, it's also been a hard year. It's been a hard two years. I, I don't think we can get away from that. Yeah, no, it, it, it has it has been a hard two years. And I think we're we're fortunate as we sit here today that you know, we've just survived it. But yeah, I, I, I totally get your point and very much looking forward to the holiday myself. A little a little, you know, unplugged for a little while. That's right. Uh, so interesting, you wrote this very cool blog post and I'll put it in the article. I think people should read this. Um, you wrote that, quote, we are on the verge of a great swing of the pendulum from a state that Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella characterized as peak centralization toward a much more distributed IT environment, end of quote. Um, along those lines in your blog, you, you managed to connect the movie, I love this, Close Encounters of the Third Kind with current IT trends. So I guess, you know, the, the move towards the more distributed environment is, is of course the move to edge computing, but, but how does that relate to the movie? Matt, please explain. Well, it was a it was a play on word with a, a phrase that I had coined here at Dell, the third premises. And the reason that I, I, I coined that term is that basically edge and IOT sort of bring about a certain consideration of, oh, it's going to be this far edge, you know, in an oil field or, you know, in a factory or, in a factory or, or wherever. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to say is we, we've been locked in for over a decade, this, this sort of false dichotomy of it's either on premises or off premises. Mm -hmm. And basically, I said, it's going to be the third premises in that in order to achieve the types of outcomes that businesses um, are trying to create, um, you're going to have to do things in real time. And there's this pesky thing called the speed of light that mm -hmm. you really can't work around. Right. And in real time systems, you can't really tolerate more than a few milliseconds of latency. And so mm -hmm. the idea was, is it's not just going to be the far edge, we are going to see computing sort of decentralized out into the world around us in order to power these, you know, on the consumer side, these immersive real time digital experiences in entertainment in you know, you name it. And then on top of that, this sort of shift towards, you know, automation everywhere, hyper automation, and all of that too, is, you know, requires real time operations. And, and until someone harnesses, you know, um, uh, uh, quantum entanglement for, you know, <laughs> latency list networking, I think we're stuck with, you know, having to put more and more out into the world around us in order to achieve those real time outcomes. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the key word there is the word immersive. I mean, there, there is this older paradigm that you're referring to that we're sort of outgrowing. There's, there's you know, the data center in the, in, in the beginning, and then there's, you know, cloud computing. People reach out to the cloud, maybe there's hybrid computing. That's kind of a big deal. But really, when I think about the edge, it's not just the network. It, it is immersive. It's all around us. It's on my wristwatch, of course. You know, it's, it's sending data back. Who knows my coffee pot? Uh, you know, the traffic light. It's really, it, it is... It is an immersive environment that, that sort of encompasses cloud and the data center. Certainly, I mean, there's some people that say, "Well, the edge edge will devour the cloud," which brings me to the 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 uh, my second question here. You you anticipate that the deployments of IT equipment outside of data center will likely dwarf what we have seen over the past decade with with public cloud. How do you see this evolving? 
Well, I think that the, you know, this, this becomes this virtuous cycle of, of automation, achievement, optimization. And I think that we're, we're beginning to see a great unlock of, you know, automation driven by advanced analytics, AI, machine learning, deep learning, you name it, machine vision. Um, and therefore everyone's eyes are open to, okay, well, what can I do with this real-time automation to, you know, promote safety, improve efficiency, you know, prevent theft and loss, all of these various um, capabilities that you could have. And I think that's simply going to drive the adoption of technology in, again, the world around us. We talk with major retailers who today, you know, they have a cluster of four hyper-converged, like a VX rail in their store. And they're talking about going from four to 20 to 40, right? And that's because- In their, in their store? Yeah. In, oh. in, 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 remember, these are big box retailers that we're talking about. Gotcha. Um, right. But, uh, you know- you know, may, maybe 40 is a little much, but certainly 20 is not outside the realm of possibility. And with that increased specialization, GP, GPUs, you know, it's, you're going to start to see these mini data center deployments all over the place. Um, and it's going to require, you know, new and interesting ways to deploy it. You know, we started many years ago servicing hyperscale players with these large modular computing containers they you know we call them containers not not the kubernetes kind but like a right. shipping container. Right. but they're actually truly modular data centers that you can drop well we've shrunk that down to a size where you know you've got a shipping dock why don't we drop off a data center inside of something that looks kind of like a refrigerator and you've got all the compute you'll need for for some period of time so it's mm -hmm. solutions like that that i think we'll see more and more and you know, think about smart cities or traffic automation and all of this stuff, you know, we're probably going to start to see these just sort of dropped into areas all over the place, right? On street corners, in parking right. lots, et cetera. You know, it, it's interesting because for, for years as cloud has grown up, people would ask, you know, so when is the data center going to die? The way you're talking about it, really, maybe the, the data center is never going to die. It's just going to shrink down and become omnipresent. The data center is if, if, the, if the data center can fit inside of a bread box, so to speak, a, a tiny micro data center. Yep. I guess the, 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 the concept of the data center will itself expand and enlarge and morph to be really fill out the edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, the, the, there's another, I think, truism in our industry is everyone likes to pronounce the death of something. Right. And there, there are no zero sum outcomes in our industry and in frankly, in most industries. So we fully anticipate that the world is going to be on premises, off premises, and the third premises. And that ultimately, cloud as a concept is less of a locality and more of an operation uh, approach to operations or operating model. And it's mm -hmm. going to have to consider this significantly now distributed environment. Um, and uh, I think that the, the world of Computing is that just sort of IT expands to be pervasive, right? So yeah, there's data centers, there's big data centers, there's hyperscale data centers, but they're microscale data centers um, and everything in between. So I think the 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 what we're really talking about is you know we're blowing up the four walls of IT and it's getting distributed everywhere. Hmm. That, that phrase, the third pre third premises, it's, it's plural, I realize, it's not third premise, the third, third premises, that, that is your invention. And it really means if, it's not just cloud. If I'm, if I'm understanding the word correctly, it's not just cloud. It's actually, the does, does that term, an umbrella term that mean cloud, old-fashioned, quote-unquote, old-fashioned data center and the edge, or, or is third premises well, specifically the edge? Specifically edge deployments. It's, it's basically... Everything that doesn't fit neatly into the, the, the sort of past definition of on-prem and off-prem, right? right. That typically on-prem meant in my data center, traditional data center. Right. Off-prem meant typically in the minds of most, you know, pundits, press, et cetera, is off-prem meant hyperscale cloud data center. Right. But I, the reason I created the term third premises is like, look, it's not this sort of duality, it's it's going to turn into everywhere. So mm -hmm. everywhere that's not those two things is what I use to describe. It's the edge, it's IoT, it's it's what we, you know, people argue with me is 
are the servers inside of a big box retailer the edge? I would argue yes. Many right. people argue, well, no, that's that's like uh, branch offices. I'm like, well, what's the difference, right? Right. What's the difference? right. So. I mean, the, the, the term could get complicated. I mean, many things in IT have numerous definitions. When I think about if, if I'm going to, first of all, I really like the term third premises, I might start using it. I, the, the complication with the term is that many of those net, those edge networks are actually anchored, of course, in a data center and or with a hyperscaler. So they they have they have a leg in both worlds, typically, so that there's really a, a, an edge network that stands all on its own, of course. So a third premises deployment is is often going to have an element of data center and or hyperscaler okay. in it yeah, correct th these are all going to be interconnected with one another right and right. so I, I guess what you would say is imagine if a lot of this is driven by the desire to do real-time automation right um a lot of that is fed through deep learning machine learning which typically has two phases right you have a training phase and then an inferencing phase right mm -hmm. and you training occurs infrequently inferencing occurs all the time right so imagine you would be doing your training on a large cluster in a data center it could be your data center it could be um, a hyperscale data center mm -hmm. um, a cloud um, and you do the training and then the, you deploy this algorithm to hundreds of locations and the inferencing is done in situ right so all of these things are interrelated and of course when it's in situ they're going to then find the interesting events that the algorithm is trained to see and or aberrations of the algorithm. And those will get sent back to the centralized training base, if you will, and the, the cycle repeats itself. So this is all interconnected. It's not, you know, one versus the other or, you know, the third premises, it's all together. And, you know, a lot of people have argued with us. We, we stated that, look, very soon customers are going to actually be operating elements of applications in all of these locations simultaneously. And we also argued that they would be doing so on-prem, off-prem and between public cloud environments. And we just got some data back from uh, ESG research um, mm -hmm. that highlighted the fact that yes, that over 50% of people are absolutely intensely using more than one cloud provider. It's not just like they have one primary and then the secondary off to the side. They are intensely using that. And then 63% of the people that are multi-cloud are actually running applications. So, you know, one single application that has microservices in multiple public cloud and on-prem environments. So it's not unusual. It's not the future. It's happening right now. So this is right. all about interconnected and what we might term cloud native microservice 12 factor, you name the, the, the this new architecture that we don't quite have a, a good name for yet. This new architecture allows you to do that because of this new approach to microservices being pulled together to create outcomes. Um, I think that's what's really unlocking a lot of interesting innovation and the ability to distribute more um, more of the work versus having to have a singular monolithic um, application that sits only in one place. Right. That, that, is, that is really fascinating. Um, and I, I've seen that all come together. It's, it's really interesting the way it sort of evolved year by year. Um, one other thing from your, your blog I have to quote is very neat. I, I'll, just my, my last quote from your, your blog, uh, quote, uh, we've reached the peak of traditional centralized data and computer warehousing, warehousing you write. And we're, we're seeing a, a fundamental shift in where computing happens and data is generated. Moving from thousands of systems in hundreds of locations to millions of systems in locations creates a scaling problem, especially for public cloud vendors. And here, I love this part. Glory awaits whoever can figure out this scaling issue. And we have a nice head start here at Dell Technologies. All right, Matt, let me give you a, a chance to do a bit of a pitch. Tell me how Dell is, this is a very thorny issue. How, how is Dell Technologies gonna answer this, this issue? Well, I think that the, 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 the thing that I'm fond of saying is, is that the, the hyperscale public cloud players are really good at managing hundreds of thousands of things in handsfuls of locations, right? Mm -hmm. um, traditional vendors like Dell um, are incredibly good at deploying, supporting, and servicing, you know, 
tens of things, hundreds of things, thousands of things in millions of locations. We have a service delivery footprint that is the envy of the industry. And therefore, we have this leg up. I also would say that, look, we are at the verge of a fundamental architectural shift. I, I mentioned the we don't know what to call it yet, cloud native, container based, but certainly I've only seen two other of these major architectural shifts. When I early on in the 90s, when I joined the industry, there was an ongoing shift to client server. Mm -hmm. Then there were the excesses of client server that were largely solved by virtualization. I would argue that cloud was really just virtualization in somebody else's data center. So not truly an architectural application architectural shift, certainly a, lo a location shift, but not right. an architectural shift. But we are on you know, the verge of a major, major architectural shift. And it's not like containers are new, Docker, et cetera, have been around for a long time, but it's the pervasive use and the experience people have built around building container-based, microservice-based applications that I believe were on the edge of exploding. And, and that, you, that, they're, they're, you're referring to really the cloud native world in which applications and indeed entire companies are built cloud first as opposed to any kind of a lift and shift environment. Well, I, I would say I would shy away from cloud native meaning um, public cloud first. Okay. What I'm saying is the it's the operating model of cloud native, the application architecture. So I'm talking less about where it's done. I'm talking more about how it's built. Distributed. And that, yes, yeah. distributed and microservice based, right? So mm -hmm. it's an app, you know, we're going from monolithic applications that had to have an op uh, operating system along with them in the form of a virtual machine to containers that are much more lightweight, easier to deploy um, and allow for a more innovative approach. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we're sort of in the early innings of that and we don't quite, no one knows who's going to sort of rise to be dominant. You've got Tanzu from our best friends VMware, you've got right. OpenShift, but then you have EKS Anywhere, which is a software only version of Amazon's EKS container service. You've mm -hmm. got Google Anthos, which is a software only version of Google's operating environment, container operating environment. And oh, by the way, it also does support VMs to some degree. And then you have Azure Stack HCI, which is the Azure uh, software deployment. So all of these are operating systems, cloud operating systems that can now be deployed anywhere. And we are deploying solutions like that today all over the place. Does one of those operating systems, the, the, the so-called cloud operating systems, you know, Tanzu, et cetera. Do you think what, there has to be a winner in the market or, or can they actually coexist? Well, you know, that's a really good question. And, and historically you, you tend to have one to two dominant players and then some specialty players, but it usually takes a decade or more for that to settle out, right? So we're only in the beginning of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's important is that our customers benefit from all of the innovation that the industry has to offer, which is why, you know, we, we work with many or well, I should say most of them today. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, Tanzu is our, 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 our number one focus, but, sure. but we also have solutions with Azure Stack HCI, um, with Anthos, um, et cetera. So, um, this is, this is what I'm saying is we're going to help create the ecosystem for this new architecture and this new distributed operating environment. Um, and that's the approach we're taking. Interesting, all right. Uh, and on that note, let's, let's look to the future and just sort of close things out. I'd like to, you to look in your crystal ball and, and, and what do you see as the, as the near to midterm future of edge computing, also known as third premises, is, is there a milestone we can expect or, and, and how can businesses can be getting ready for it now? Yeah, well, the, this is the interesting thing about um, the industry, right? You have a new movement and everyone expects it to be some sort of light switch aha moment. You know, I, this is all happening right now, right? right. It's, it's happening right now. And, you know, people debate in the same way we spent, it seems like 15 years arguing over what is really cloud my definition versus your definition, the edge right. is happening right now, but it's certainly accelerating. So I think what we'll see is a dramatic acceleration of edge deployments as 
sort of the expertise around advanced data analytics and machine vision as these become more pervasive? I think we're, we, we're all talking about it. There's certainly a skills shortage out there, but there are mm. new techniques, new, um, you know, if you will, analytic workbenches or frameworks, mm -hmm. all of which were simplifying um, the, the building of these new advanced analytical workloads. I think the unlock for the edge is that is sort of where you're finding um, opportunities to link the physical and the virtual world together or the digital world together. And mm -hmm. certainly we're seeing more and more and more of that. And, and frankly, you know, COVID as much of a disaster as it has been for, for all of us has actually been a boon for sure. the utilization of these, you know, these new technologies, for example, how do you ensure that everyone's wearing a mask before the doors unlock? All, all of these are driven through machine learning. How do I monitor people's temperature as they're walking through? These are all things that were not as pervasive as they are today. And, and so I just think we're, we're, we're experiencing it now. I don't think there's going to be any single event that we can point to. But I think what we'll see is more and more you'll walk into a store and you'll be like, you've got a, a loyalty application and all of a sudden, how did it know I was walking past the cereal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did it know my favorite cereal is this and that it's on sale right when I'm walking by it, right? It's those right. kinds of things that will, it will be, it will be like they, they say the, the, you know, the boiling of the frog. It's happening. We just right. aren't noticing it as, as clearly as I think it's happening. And, and it's tough, right? Because you also have people who are like investors, for example, who want to say, well, What's going on? You know, what can you point to about Edge? It's like, well, um, I just sold, you know, a million servers to retailer X so that they could do these types of things. That's what's happening. Hmm. Um, so I, I just think sometimes there's no signal. Everything seems is happens in waves, and waves don't, you know, they're they're not a singular event. They they right. have some degree of wavelength to them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's fascinating. It's going to be really neat to uh, to watch the sector evolve over the next several years. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to start using the word the third premises. And when people ask me, what's that? I mean, you really haven't heard of the, that, that term? Well, you need to know that. Check with Matt Baker. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, Matt, thank you very much for sharing your expertise today. Totally appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, well, it's great. And, and happy holidays, I should say. We, thanks. We, yeah, uh, no, same to you. Let's, let's you know, have, have a great one. I'm full circle. So thanks for the time. <laughs> I really appreciate it. All righty. Okay. Chat later.